Hey, I'm Nick from GWorks. I'm one of the company directors here, and these are the magnificent products that we make. The canopies and trays all start from ground up. So Adam, my business partner and I, have gone through, designed these things, and built these things to be used in the outdoors. So the process starts in our design office where we use the SolidWorks program to generate and create the product that's in front of us now. It all starts down the back with our CNC equipment and where we use a CNC laser and press brakes to ensure that the accuracy from the render on the computer is delivered to the product that's here in front of me now. The canopies start as a subframe first. It's a mixture of uh, Unistrut and 5052 3mm aluminium, which then is formed into the shell that we have here in front of us. So we use the Unistrut here for the ability to bolt things in and out. So fridge slides, drawers, roof shelves, like you can see here in front of me. Uh, it just gives you that flexibility later on, but the frame gives you the strength to carry the larger items on your roof. So uh, if you don't have, have the, the framework on the inside and you, you put a rooftop tent on, the vibrations and of, of a vehicle can actually crack and move those sheets and that's where you get your fatigue mainly in aluminium. We have some key welds around the frame here to the sheet that is really there for structural purposes. That's what helps carry the loads on the roof and less fatigue in the long run. So below here you can obviously see our signature tray top with our tie down rails in the side here. They're designed to take multiple different types of straps, so you don't really need to think, oh, I can only use this type of strap. You can use rope, you can use big truck buckles, anything like that. Your cheap, nasty ones from Bunnings work as well, so uh, we've designed that specifically around that. We've got our four mil tray top here. So the trays are made out of a mixture of, of different materials. So your tray top, which is a pressed four mil sheet, 5052 grade, and then we've got three mil up the front here and your boxes and light surrounds are all made out of the same material that the canopies are made out of, so 5052 in the three mil. Underneath, we've got a uh, SHS subframe which houses Unistrut, so that's how we bolt on all of our accessories underneath. If you do do any damage or you change your vehicle, we can just change those parts to suit whatever vehicle you're going to. Uh, around the front here, the headboard is a mixture of four mil, 10 mil and three mil. Generally, with a train canopy, your filler comes out of the tub and then it generally has to sit below and there's always a few issues getting it to that right angle to make sure that you can fill it efficiently at the Bowser. So one of the reasons that we've gone with our headboard design is to actually relocate the fillers up here, which makes a, an easier filling process at the Bowser as well as the tap at home when you're sticking the hose in there to fill your, your water tank up. Each side is built mirror image. However, depending on what vehicle you've got, your fill may be on this side or that side. So that's why they're mirror imaged. You'll notice between the actual headboard of the tray and the canopy, that we actually put a D-rubber seal down there to actually give it that uh, nice pushed finish. And it also takes the vibrations out that may come driving down the road. So you'll see that um, in other manufacturers' designs, there's usually a 10 mil air gap or, or some form of air gap. It's a nice, pressed, clean finish. Just the overall aesthetics just looks that little bit better in our opinion, and that's why we do that. So at the back here, you can see we have a full headboard window protector. So you don't have to worry about if the load shifts or something moves in the back and it damages the back of your, your window or your, your vehicle. You've got that whole section here. You'll also see that we've got some cutouts here and these are specifically designed for when you're running a lift off canopy, which all our canopies are made and suited to that. There's a relief here for the cable gland to come through so you can pass your cables through and it's nice and neat finish. Down the bottom here, we've got what we call our inspection plates or our cover plates. So these are just a nice way of cleaning up what's behind your actual car in your headboards. On one side, we generally put in our water pump. So these are a sea flow pump, they're a diaphragm. So if they do run out of water, you're not gonna damage the pump. And then on the other side, we generally run like our, our cables through for filling. So just keeps it nice and neat and tidy. When you look down in the corner of that vehicle, you'll just see a nice clean line, which is, you know, aesthetics is, is one of the biggest things with cars these days. You'll see down below here, uh, in this one, we've actually got a 60 litre water tank. So you'll notice there's a few different hoses here and there. So we use the John Guest poly hose with the push lock fittings. This is what they use majority in the caravanning industry. 
getting parts around Australia is pretty quick and easy. And if you ever have an issue with anything on the road and you say, for example, your pump wire got cut because you, you, a stick came up and ripped it out and you need to get water out of that tank, you can get underneath the car and it's just push and release and you can have water out of that tank. You'll see down here, we've got our front mount. So this is to suit specific vehicles. If you were to buy a train canopy from us today, and then in two years time, you bought a new vehicle and you wanted to take that setup with you, the way that we build them allows you to do that. Basically, your mounts will change vehicle to vehicle, your patch lead harnesses for your lights, and then whatever auxiliaries the vehicle would have. So whether that be reverse sensors, camera, or cross traffic sensors, the ability to change those across the vehicles is here with the platform that we build on. So how are they secured? So a headboard is actually bolted on and there's a few reasons why we do that. If you wanted to go to a different vehicle later on and that vehicle might, you might go from a Hilux to a LC79, you've got a tray only and you want to take that across. It's a matter of bolting a new headboard on, new boxes and a new infill. Change your patch leads out and you're good to go. Being able to get the headboard straight, so obviously aluminium, it's subject to heat distortion. So be, being able to bolt these on is a much, much, well, what we believe, a much, much better manufacturing process to deliver a, a better quality part time and time again. So it's actually bolted through the mount into the the C-frame subframe underneath, and then it's mounted in six locations to the actual tray top, so to the tray subframe as well. We do get a bit of adjustment being able to set it correctly to square, which is a really, really key thing uh, that we do. This one doesn't have it yet. It's still in its assembly process, but our normal fillers would go in here. And we actually have our ID plates. So, you know, your partner's driving the car and they go to the service station and they don't normally fill your vehicle up. They're not gonna go to the the side of the vehicle and go, oh, I don't know what that is. It's got water or fuel written on it. So you can take that away from potential mishaps of putting the wrong type of uh, fuel in or filling the water tank with diesel, etc. All of our tray tops are Raptor coated uh, during the assembly process. So as you can see here, this one is freshly done, ready to go. So the next step for this assembly is the headboard gets bolted onto the front. All the plumbing and things like that are sorted and then it's almost at that drop on vehicle ready stage uh, for us. Behind the scenes, what happens now is generally the toolboxes get put together, uh, all your little bits and pieces, and, and it's, just, it's just a smooth process from that point forward. So we do that for durability. You can touch it up at any point. It is very strong and robust, the Raptor coat, and it's just a nice, neater finish it's rather than having to put your rubber on top and then, you know, Basically, if you've got rubber on top and you put dirt in, dirt will get between the tray top and the rubber and it will actually sand that surface area. So being able to have the, the Raptor coat on there, it's just more of a durable finish. Uh, like I said, you can touch that up at any point in time. Trundle drawers, etc. So uh, there's a few key things that we do with these. Um, so they are a sealed box inside a box. So. One of the things that we do is we have a trundle drawer lockout. So if you're parked on a hill and you need to get something out of the back, you don't have to worry about that drawer catching your arm while you're trying to hold it out with to say, you know, 100 kilos worth of spare parts or tools in the back. So it'll actually lock out, which is nice and neat. So it's a box inside a box, it's fully sealed. There's a rib in the center of the trundle drawer to help disperse that weight because, well, we all know people love to carry their spare parts in the back and, you know, a couple of CVs and a few belts and things like that in there, you start to get a bit of weight in. So just to give it that strength. So it's, it's simple and easy to close it. There's two tabs down the side. You go in, done, locked. So when we have our boxes on these all the way around, they're all keyed alike. So all your, your toolboxes and trundles, are all keyed with that same key. And then your locks up in the canopy are, are keyed separately. So um, the way that we make them now, we've gone to a lock cover as such. So we thought ahead, because 90% of people want to put lights inside their canopy for camping or trade and, and work. So we've actually put cutouts in there now to supply uh, terra loom lights. So whether it be rock lights or strip lights, we actually have rock light provisions on the inside, so they'll actually shine down into the canopy, and then a strip light above, so that's like your overhead light, 
uh, if you're cooking on your bench or things like that or you know doing some some computer work on your bench so these are nice and quick and easy to get off we do use a, a generic uh, style well tail lock uh, when I say generic it's it meets the normal pattern that most locks do however there's a spring load actually in that that lock mechanism so when you turn it to open or lock there's no in between it it kicks that either way so you'll find that with the other brand or varieties of wildtail locks there's some form of striker bar between usually with a grub screw or something like that with your vibrations across you know multiple dirt roads and things like that those grub screws can wear into that that striker bar as such so then they creates that small little bit of your lock that can actually sometimes you go to unlock it and it's not unlocking so that was one of the reasons that we went to that you notice here that our rubber is actually on our door not on the inside of the canopy because it forms a better seal i should have mentioned this before but we do a flush floor in all of our canopies and service bodies so that means that you can get things in and out without damaging that rubber and that's one of the main reasons that we do put the rubber up on the door so you'll notice if you've watched some of Tyler Thompson videos, he's one of our brand ambassadors, uh, been working with us from the start. Uh, he has not had any dust issues inside either of his new canopies. And that's just tried and tested. We've had multiple, multiple people go north, do the Cape, dusty roads, bull's dust, things like that. No issue. So that's something that we're really, really proud of. You'll notice here that there's multiple adjustment points for your gas struts, top and bottom. So that can change how high the door opens, how much snapback there is in the door. We generally put them in a neutral position. As you can see, nice and easy door, chain, door close there. You'll notice up the top, we use a center flex hinge, not like a piano hinge, butt hinges or anything like that. So what that does is when the doors actually open, and the, it's raining, the water runs down the door and then out and pushes down the gunnels of the side of the canopy. Uh, so that stops that water coming in between that separated gap. You notice up the top here, this is actually one of our roof platforms. So all the canopies are made with a channel across the roof. They run uh, two channels, north, south, and then you've got a few different methods. So you can bolt rooftop tents directly to those rails. You can run platform racks or crossbars as we call them. So what makes the, the platform rack a little bit different? Each section here has a east-west cross brace, which actually has Unistrut. So if you're carrying ladders and all different types of things on your roof, you can actually set strapping points up to suit the equipment that you're actually carrying on your roof. So it's just a safer and easier way. We do make ladders to allow you to climb up the back and get your things off to so surfboards, ladders, whatever. You notice here that there's a couple of bolt holes. This is actually our lift off point. On our internal subframe, we've got a 12 mil plate that's actually welded inside to the frame and then stitched to the sheet as well. We then drill and tap these holes. Uh, the legs are bolted on so you're not having to worry about loading one side of the canopy up too much and it takes a little bit of weight off the other side or the concrete's not level or whatever it may be. Um, they're always fixed to that canopy until they're actually removed. So one of the key features uh, with our filler relocations is they are a billet aluminium piece that's manufactured specifically for us over in the UK. They are a purpose-built fitting item for our trays and canopies. So you can't just buy them off the shelf uh, at super cheap auto or a boating supply place uh, down the road. So uh, that's a really, really signature piece for us. I'm really, really proud of that, that we've been able to source that part. You'll see here that we, we do have the studs here for the tray sides. We've got the catch plates up the top, so they're easily removable. So usually we'd take the pins out and then you'd slide it back. The tray side would come off, you could store them. We've actually got these ones stored up on the roof here Today they're made up. So we use all stainless steel fittings and components on the tray sides. So no zinc or anything like that. It's all stainless steel. Uh, it's generally polished stainless steel as well. You can get them blacked out. However, it's a little bit more difficult because there is moving parts in it. So there'll be more wear and tear on the powder coat. And that's why we generally don't recommend it. Around the back here, I know I touched on it a little bit earlier but everything underneath is bolt on. So if you, you, know, you back into something in the garage and you destroy a light and a light's around, you can just pick the phone up, give us a call, let us know, 
you've done a right hand tail light, the surround's broken as well, what we can do is regenerate that part for you with a new light and it's plug and play, three bolts underneath to, to get your lights around out and, and you're good, good to go. It's, it's the same as if you damage your car and you go to the panel beater and you, know, you need a new front door, no worries, they unbolt that door, get you a new one, paint it, put it back on, it's the same process. We do a one meter canopy, a 1500 and a 1700 canopy setup. We do it a little bit bigger, I'm talking about most generic dual cabs here. Um, so the beauty is, and it happens to everyone at some point in time, I've driven through the garage with my door open. So having a generic part means that it's easier to have it replaced. There's less hassle for you when something like that happens. You can pick the phone up. We generally have some of these parts in stock at all times, whether it not be pressed or whatever, but the manufacturing weight is gonna be a lot less than if you had to have a custom door remade again. So again, with our water tank underneath, so we, we run a poly water tank. Uh, we do a 40 litre and a 60 litre. Uh, we do want to have one in the headboard at some time in the future, however, We've had a few issues uh, with getting that right, so we've just held off for now. Beauty with how we make our products though is they will be able to be retrofitted into any of these trays and canopies that have been made prior to that tank being created, and that's one of the key things that we, we do with our products. So it's a poly tank, 10 mil thick. We use, uh, like I said before, John Guest fittings. Uh, we do use some thicker fittings, which is your generic hose clamp style fitting. We use the poly tanks rather than like a stainless tank for a few things. It's a shelf item, so it can be replaced at any point in time quickly and easily. Also, if you do get a, a, a stick into the tank and it cracks on the tracks, you're generally carrying some sort of Sikaflex or silicon based product. You can actually smear that over or use a soldering iron and a zip tie and repair that tank to get you on the road. You run into that situation with a stainless tank, it's much harder to repair it on the side of the road. Common question is, can I fit the tank, well, I've got an aftermarket fuel tank or a long range fuel tank? Yes, you can. We need to know that information at the time of the install because it means that the tank may need to be shifted slightly to the left or the right depending on vehicle, what vehicle it is uh, and how it goes together. Uh, Hilux is a perfect example uh, with the way that the shock tower runs and the breather that they put on the top of the long range tanks, we have to set them specifically for that. This one here is based off our tradie package. You've got your nice infill panel here, which just kind of matches that body line of the car. It gives us that nice, neater finish. So here you can see our adjustable offset mud guard. So four bolts underneath, you can remove your guard, you can change your offset, uh, do all those things that you need to do. Uh, we do a little bit different with the way that we weld and manufacture our guards. So generally it's a generic miter joint. Uh, we do a couple of behind the scenes things that are a little bit different. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, like I did mention before, Tyler Thompson, uh, if you check out his videos, it's actually damaged a few of his guards, but the welds haven't cracked. So that it's actually deformed the guard, which is really, really easy to fix. Uh, generally you can just give it a nice bit of, bit of a tap with a soft hammer and it'll go back into shape. Uh, and it won't actually crack that weld. So that, that's a really key thing. You don't have to worry about your guard flapping in the wind if it's cracked. You'll see here, these are our tapered toolboxes. So this is the 1700 tray. Uh, this is what we offer. Like I said before, it's a tradie package. Uh, it's got a one meter box. It's got our tray side. So uh, this car is obviously built for lift off canopy. So we've got short sides and we've got long sides to go with the vehicle. So compression locks. So we have a toolbox strap here, creates a bit of a bench when you need to get ropes and things like that out of your toolbox. You know, a common question that we get is, can I fit my ARB compressor or my TJM compressor inside these boxes? The answer is yes. So the, the boxes fit nice and neatly in here. As you'll see here, the seal is the key on these boxes. So you'll see that we've got nice flowing lines of rubber all the way around. And this is what gives that perfectly good seal on our boxes. So whether they're big boxes or small boxes, we use that same method in manufacturing. Uh, so if it was a truck 
or a car. That's the way that we manufacture our boxes and they're being tried and tested. There's no secret that these locks can play up. They generally get like mud and dust inside this little button here. So when you're washing your car, just make sure you give it a bit of a hose out. You use things like WD-40, uh, et cetera, to clean them. That's a really good idea. You'll notice at the back here, we've actually got our builder's rack. On the front, you'll see there's load spikes in there. So if you are tying long lengths of timber, et cetera, onto the vehicle, you've got something to pull against. And you've also got our adjustable back section here that just folds up and down. So it's nice, quick and easy. It's just a neater finish. You'll see here that the side of the actual bar finishes at the edge of the tray side. We've got some four mil plates on the side. So four mil locking plates, three mil construction on here. As I said before, stainless hinges, just a nice little detail that we've been doing from the start with the G-Works logo on either side. You'll see on this one here, we've had our camera relocation bracket underneath. So these are all 3D printed from the guys over at Flux 3D. Look them up online, it's a really quality part. It's Australian made, which is really, really good. And you'll notice here, we've got our cross traffic sensor relocations on the vehicle as well. So set up to work as they were from factory with that tub or rear bumper section. So as I mentioned before, this is a tradie package. So this doesn't actually come with a water tank. That's why it's got this non-billet fitting in the side here. We will be looking in the future to going to a laser engraved uh, filler cap uh, to hold that housing. People say to me, I can't fit much in my one meter box. Look, there's a few ways to skin a cat as they say, but inside a one meter box, you can fit an 85 litre Bushman's upright and a pantry. On the other side, you can fit a single drawer and a roof shelf, which is perfect. You know, you don't need to take the kitchen sink when you go away. And people go, oh, but I really want to have a drawer on the side that I have my fridge on. The beauty is when you run this size setup, you've got this tray space at the back, which makes the perfect kitchen. Or even better yet, you can get the trundle top on the back, so you can pull your trundle drawer out, you can set that up as your kitchen. It's a large cutting area and open space and it's perfect for cooking in. You can still fit your power setups inside. Everything works, whether it's a one meter box or a two meter box, two and a half meter box, whatever it may be. The way that we produce our products, it scales in sizes. So we do work with a local 12 volt company that produce all of our electrical packages. So as you can see here on the wall, you've got your uni strut here, which allows you to bolt a few different setups onto there. So whether or not you're that avid DIYer that wants to do all your setup at home yourself, let us know. We can produce you a flat sheet panel here so you can do your own fit out, or you know you can get crafty, go to Bunnings, get yourself some plywood, get the carpet out, make it look really, really nice, neat and tidy. And it's as simple as getting some spring nuts to go inside of this channel. So. You know, where can I buy them? Well, you can get some from us uh, when you purchase your train canopy. You can either go to your local bolt store. Uh, they don't actually sell them at Bunnings, unfortunately, or you can try them on lines. All right, guys, thanks for taking the time. If you've managed to make your way the entire way through this video, I know it could have been boring there listening to me for a little bit, but thank you. Uh, I hope you've got a better understanding of the products that we manufacture here at G-Works. If you want to know any more information, jump onto our website or give us a call 0405 951 721 sales at gwrks.com.au. Flick us an email with your questions. If you want a quote, jump onto our website, fill out the contact us form. That'll actually generate to you our customer inquiry form. Once you get that back to us, you'll generally have your quote within 24 to 48 hours. So, we are constantly trying to improve the products that we produce and how we use and develop our, our tools to help the, the flow of our customer's journey to be as, as great as possible and as quick as possible. So, uh, you know, if you've got any feedback for us, we're always willing to listen. We always, like it says, you know, we're always trying to innovate our design. So if we come up with a, a better way of manufacturing or doing something during the time that you've placed your order, it is generally put into your build free of charge. So, um, you know, that's just, we want to back our products 110% and that's one of the things that we do 
uh, to make sure that we can deliver that.